Well, hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know, you really know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, here we are, it's January the 3rd. The year is flying by, don't you think? I mean, it seemed like it was only yesterday that it was Christmas Day and here we are already on the 3rd of January. I don't know about you, but as I have got older through the years, uh, it seems that the years seem to come around just that so much quicker. In a couple of days time on Friday, it's my birthday. And my children have already started coming to me and saying, hey dad, what do you want for your birthday? And my answer is gonna be pretty much the same as it was for Christmas. Well, I don't want anything really because I don't know what I want. It's not that I don't like gifts, I do. But, I, but there's nothing I really want. And in, in the end of the day, what I would really like is what would be really very meaningful to me is that they would either call or they would come and see me. That's really all I would really, or would really like, would really like. Something happens to you, you know, whereas once I wanted a present, now I want a present of their presence, uh, if that makes sense. Well, St. Paul writes a beautiful passage of scripture and he's in prison. And it's not the only time he'll be in prison, but he's in prison, he's awaiting trial and he writes to a little group of people in Philippi. Philippi is this uh, little town in, in Greece. And he's brought some of these people to faith and just a handful of them, the early church in Philippi was just a handful of people. And here he is in prison, not knowing what his future will be, but it could be really serious. He writes to them and you can tell he's in a reflective state. And the scholars tell us something about this passage of scripture, which is beautiful. And in a sense, as we launch into a new year, into a new stage in our life, maybe new moments in our life, there's something really in this about how we're meant to think. How we're meant to think, because the scripture say, says, as we know, and as I quote often, as you think is how you go. And so from Philippians chapter four, verse eight, and Scott, I'm going to ask you if you just highlight a few words for me as we go along the way. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, highlight true. Whatever is honourable, highlight honourable. Whatever is just, highlight just. Whatever is pure, highlight pure. Whatever is pleasing, highlight pleasing. Whatever is commendable, highlight commendable. If there is any excellent and is there any worthy of praise, think about these things things. Highlight, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Now let's read it again, right? Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Um, uh, it's a beautiful passage of Scripture, a really beautiful passage of Scripture. Paul, from his cell, thinking about this group of people that he's particularly affectionate about, he's saying, let me talk to you about what it is to have a wholesome thought life. He's towards the end of the letter and he's saying, let, let me tell you about what it is to think in a wholesome manner. And, and he says, he says, whatever is, whatever is uh, true, um, which is the honest, uh, which is the, the opposite of dishonest and reliable, whatever is not <laughs> uh, dishonest and reliable, think about those things. And, and, then, and then what else does he say? He said, whatever is honorable, whatever is noble, um, Whatever's dignified, whatever is worthy of respect, think about those things. And then he goes on and he says, whatever is just, which is all about conformity to God's standard. Right. And, and then he comes along and he says, whatever is pure. What's pure? Pure means to be undefiled. It means to not be mixed with immorality. And then he goes on and he, and he says, um, and whatever is pleasing, um, in other words, what brings peace and not conflict? And then he says, and whatever is commendable, uh, whatever is admirable, think about the positive. Think about uh, the, the, the constructive rather than the negative and destructive. 
he gives these six terms that you can see here, six terms. And he says, Thinks about, think about these because these are excellent, he says. What does he say? He says, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. He said, think about the excellent things. And these six things, he says, these are things that you should be thinking about. These are things your mind should be going to. These are things that are praiseworthy. Think about these things. And then he says, and then he says to them, you've seen it in me, copy me, right? And, and he says this in verse nine, keep on doing the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. Again, keep on doing the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen. Four things, learned, received, heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. In other words, you will live with a sense of peace. The God of peace will be with you if you do these things. In the Bible, it's very clear that as we think, so we live our life. As we think, so controls the peace and harmony of our life. As we think, so controls what we achieve in life. And Paul is saying to them in his prison cell, to a little group of people he was very affectionate, hey, think guys, think, really think, really think. Really think about how you're thinking. Be, be positive. Put your mind to these things, to what is true, to what is noble and right and pure and lovely and commendable. Put your mind to these things. Think about that. Now, when I read that passage of Scripture and I read what the scholars are having to say, I can't help but think to myself, is that the way I think? The Scriptures, the Kingdom of God is calling me to a new way of thinking. And as we begin a brand new year, do you need to think differently? Now, for many of us, what stops us ever changing is habit. Right now, you can stop and go, I agree, Bruce. I think I need to change these things. But because you're in the habit, and what's habit? Habit is, tra is, the, is the automatic training that you've given yourself without thought. Because you're in the habit, you keep thinking those things. And so, so to change your thinking is to grab your thinking at the time you make the mistake and come back and say, I don't think like that anymore. I don't speak like that anymore and to bring yourself around to change. It's how you, how you change things. In your business, if you're in a place where there's good opportunity, think about all these things. In your relationships, wherever you are, in your study, in your retirement, think about these things and chase after God exactly where you are. Well, Lent 2022 is next month, uh, 2022, 24. Um, I don't know where I am, see, I told you I was lost, lost for time. Lent 2024 is next month. I want to ask you if you'd help us to reach more people. I know many of you have, and if you have, thank you very much. But if you haven't, can I ask you, would you help us to reach more people? We figured out for $7, we can get someone to start listening to the daily devotionals. We can find them by sending stuff out. Would you consider contributing today? You can go to this address or you can go to uh, the Give tab. And I'm going to keep asking, and I'm not embarrassed to ask, because I know so many of you told me that Lent has changed your life when you did the Lent Daily Devotionals with us. Well, we're going to do it again at a deeper level for everyone who's committed and has been walking in faith and at a level that people will be able to get if you're brand new. Would you be able to help us so that we can advertise to find people, maybe even your family members, through social media and other means? Would you go to this address and help us reach more people this Lent? so that they would encounter God more deeply. Father God, we come before you right now. Lord, there are so many people who need to encounter you so their thinking changes. Lord, allow us to think about what is true, noble, right, pure, lovely and admirable. That you, Lord God, would be present with us in a fresh and beautiful way. And Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' name through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, God bless you all, everybody. Love you very much. So grateful for your many, many messages, for your support. And uh, uh, you really move me very deeply. Hey, talk to you tomorrow. And don't forget, wherever you are, God's never, ever far from you.